Hey everybody, it's time for the live. It's Tuesday at almost noon. So this is Jamie from My Back Porch. Let me turn it up. Hi everybody. I'm Jamie and uh, my business is My Back Porch. And I am here today to tell you all about some Venetian plaster that we're gonna do. Now, what I'm doing is going to be a little bit different than um, your typical application of Venetian plaster. It's a little bit messier. We're gonna use our fingers. And uh, the frame that I finished is back here behind me. I'm sure you can see it a little bit. Uh, I'll show you a little closer up in a little while, but we're gonna show you, or I'm gonna show you how to use Venetian plaster in just a different way. I'm gonna add some milk paint to it give it some colors. So I would love to see who all is watching. If you're watching or just tuning in, pop on and say where you're from. If you have any questions, I can't see most of them while I'm doing this. So uh, pop your questions on there and I will answer them as soon as I can. If I happen to catch them, I will uh, try my best to answer. So we'll just get right to work. So let me turn you down and let's get to work. Okay. So I have, this is my Venetian plaster. This is the uh, milk paint that I'm going to use. It's called My Linen Apron. And if you see me not digging out of that, it's because I have all of my milk paints in uh, little containers here. So I'm not going to open this yet because, well, I'm kind of low, so I could use it. But so we're going to mix this first. Uh, we're going to be painting on some frames. So you guys can see me actually doing it on a frame. And of course, look here. This is a mahogany frame and we're getting some bleed through and I used a little matte sealer hoping that that would help a little bit, but we might just have a little pink in it. So let's start by mixing our Venetian plaster and yep, I have one that's already open. So let's go. Let's do this. I'm going to use this big bowl here because we're going to be mixing it. And since I don't need too much, I will just, uh, I don't think I need a half a cup of Venetian plaster. I'm just getting out about a half a cup. We're going to dump that in. Set that to the side. So now I'm going to put some more water in here so I don't put too much in. I kind of want it to be a little thick. Oh, let's see. Where did I put my spoon? Oh, here's a spoon. And it's got a little color in it, so we'll already add some little color. So I'm going to start to get this mixed up. I learned that you add the water into the milk paint. I mean, into, oh, we got to go in so fast, I forgot to add the milk paint. Oh, well, we'll do that here in just a sec. So once I get that, I think I'm going to want just a little bit more. And the Venetian plaster is white. So that's your natural color that it's going to come in. So I want to add some of my linen apron Toscana milk paint. So I'm going to add that in. going to add in a little bit more. So we'll probably need a little bit more water for that. So let's see how we're doing here. So I'm just trying to get this all mixed in. No, we don't. I don't think we need any more water. So the next thing I'm going to do, because if you notice, this is pretty grainy. I don't know if you can tell that it's kind of grainy looking. So what we're going to do 
Don't you love these bendable things? Is I'm gonna pull out my handy dandy mixer. We're gonna move, I'm gonna move you up a little so that I can get in here and do this. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it on and I'm just gonna mix this up. Kinda looks like I'm making cupcakes here. I have to say it works better when I have more. Let's see, use that as a spatula. You see that's getting better. So I'm gonna do it just a little bit more. And again, usually I think you want this about the consistency of sour cream, but uh, for my purposes, I want it a little bit thicker. Ooh. Okay, we'll go with that. Let's see if I can, there we go, knock a little off. I'll clean that off later. Okay, so this is what we've got here. Let's move back down so you can see what I'm doing. This is what we've got here. We have this, see how much nicer and smoother, just mixing that together. So we're gonna use that here in just a minute. So I'm gonna let this set and then we're gonna pull that out. And we're what we're gonna do is we're gonna prep on the frame first. Let's see, make sure, okay. So with the frame, this is, I've painted on Almond Days. So this is your one-step paint. And for those of you that uh, have never used one-step paint, this stuff smells delicious. It smells like you've got a little bit of vanilla. So I'm going to go in here. We're just going to paint this. I, I put two coats of paint on the other side just because of that bleed through. And I think once we get everything I'm going to be putting on this frame, we're not going to have that as a problem. But I do have, I did find two matching frames in my she shed that I could use. So I'm just getting the edges here. This goes on so nice and smooth. It doesn't smell. And if you paint it on and don't go back over it, uh, you're not gonna have too bad of brush strokes. It's gonna dry so smooth. All right, put that brush in water. So now this side is dry. So we'll just, whoop de doo turn that around. So now what I'm gonna do is, uh, Let's see. Oh, it's time for the Venetian plaster. Getting behind myself. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm gonna put my gloves on. This is where it gets messy. So while I'm getting my gloves on, let's see. I see Debbie from Kansas City. I see Patty from Southern California. I see Leslie from California. Hi, ladies. Glad y'all are here. Okay. I need, I'm gonna just use, I'm gonna use my hands. Let's just do this messy. So what I'm doing is I am wanting to put this on my frame. So I'm just spreading it on first. And then I'm going on and I am rubbing this in. Last time I had a huge frame. And so I, I had to put on a lot of this. 
So what I'm doing is I'm putting this on, trying to get it thinner. I still want to see those ribs there. And you let it set for a little bit. I'm going to pull out something and try to get it to dry just a little bit because I don't want it to set too much. I want it to partially set. Because once it's done partially setting, then I'm going to work with it. Oh, you can't see, can you? There we go. So if you can see here, I've got, I've put it on, I've kind of just spread it thick. I'm drying it just a little bit. So can y'all see that? See how I've just kind of spread that on? I'm drying it a little bit. Now you're going to want it to dry a little longer but it's going to get to that certain dryness and then you're going to want to go back and re-manipulate the Venetian plaster. See, it's already kind of getting dry enough. Okay, let's move you down so you can see what I'm doing. So once I get it to that, I, it's going to move around. It's going to, you're going to see some of un, some underneath. And huh, what's that blue thing? Not supposed to be in there. Okay, so I'm just rubbing it around. And what I'm doing is I'm getting some unique texture here. And the, the thing I like about the Venetian plaster is it will, um, it feels cold when you're done. It, you feel the lime, you feel the marble dust, you can feel it, it feels like a stone. And it's so unique. And so, how many frames do you see with a texture that's, Kind of like that. With a bigger one, you can almost pull out a uh, credit card or like a hotel room key and manipulate it kind of that, that way. So I'll leave that be. So that is what we did. And I now I just realized I haven't pre-done one where I've done all of that on it. So let's let's do a little bit more and we'll see if we can get that to dry more. Yes, this feels like a fabulous cooking show. There will cover up that red. So I will put this on. I'm going to let it sit for just a little bit. See, I'll probably put too much on. I made way too much. And then, so this is not the white color. We added the milk paint. So you put the powders together, you get it to the color you want. So if you're out, if you're going to mix your milk paint or something, you, you want to do that before. Let's see, there's our little ribs there. So once it's dry, then you're going to go back and let me wipe my hands off. See if I can get some of this off. Oops, I got some over there. Okay, so next of all, what we're going to do is we are going to mix up some milk paint while this dries. Let's see if I can get it to dry quick enough. So, uh, okay, I'm going to mix up some Venetian brown. I've already got it in here, but I've taken all of my milk paint and I've put them into these jars. It's so much easier to do. And I just need just a little bit. Oh, I already have a cup. And then I'm gonna add just a little bit of water and mix this up. And usually, I'm going to have to clean off my Venetian plaster spoon. 
So you see how the powder went much darker? The powder is going to go darker when it's wet, and then it will dry back down to the color that it was when it was in powder form. I usually like to let my milk paint sit for about 30 minutes. That way it can, since you're adding in water, all of that can mix in and dissolve and get nice and yummy and have no, what am I thinking? Have no uh, granules and be nice and smooth. So what we're trying to do here is I'm trying to get this dry enough that I can work with it. Normally you're going to want to wait until it's fully dry. Now I can see some places here where it's drying because the color has lightened. So it's not going to be completely dry. See how that's, it's not moving anymore. You kind of got to get it at just that right <clears throat> consistency. There we are. We're working on this other side here. Getting it. Because it's just dry enough to work on it. So normally when you work with Venetian plaster, <clears throat> you're going to pull out a trowel and you're going to trowel it and make it just nice and smooth. And what I'm doing is I'm making it more of a putty paste, putting it on nice thick texture. Look at all of that coming through. I don't like that. So, while we're working on that, <clears throat> oh, I guess I wiped most of it off. So, we're just kind of getting it messy. And then we're going to go back and we're going to sand this part here. See, it's, it's drying. Now, I don't think it's completely dry. So, uh, we'll go ahead and sand it and you'll get an idea of what I'm doing. Now this is some pretty thin sandpaper. I'm using 500. I don't want to go dig because I didn't do it. So I'm going to fold this down. And I'm going to just sand it smooth. Now, granted, this is not completely dry, so I'm being very careful. But I'm getting it nice and smooth because I'm going to put another layer on it. We're going to put the milk paint on top of this Venetian plaster. And it just goes right in. So, okay, so now we're going to take... We're just going to pretend like this is completely dry. And I'm going to add some of this milk paint right on top of it. Now remember, it goes on this color, it's going to dry lighter color. So this is just like you would be if you were painting milk paint on any project. You're going to put it on and then we're going to let it dry and we're going to watch some paint dry here. It should dry pretty quick because it it goes into and melds into that Venetian plaster. So that Venetian plaster, see the texture that's coming up here? So we're trying to get it to dry here. The next step is your typical step that you would use for doing milk paint. I'm going to use some of the antiquing glaze 
and um, pull away a little bit of this milk paint so we have that aged look. The frame that I did had some gilding on it and I had to go back in and redo some of the gilding because I wanted it to look kind of like it was old. People had painted over it. You know, it's gone through the ages and painted over the gilding and oh, we need a little more gilding. And so you see how that's drying? See what a beautiful, gorgeous color that is. So once we get this mostly dry, I'm going to come back in with my milk paint and, or not my milk paint, we're done with the milk paint. I'm going to come in with the antique and glaze. I swear these glasses, they stick together. So we're going to have one cup with antique and glaze. And then I'm also gonna have another cup with just water. And you'll see why here in a second. So I thought I'd show you guys, we're using a seawool sponge. I actually found this sponge right here on a beach. So if this is your real seawool sponge, look at all the different textures. And this is what I used on the um, frame that I'm going to show you. Uh, this is the one that I got from uh, probably Amazon, pulled it apart. So this one I've used quite a bit. And this one's a little easier to use. So I'm going to put this in my water. Here we go. So now it's nice and damp. So I'm going to put it in here, get some of my antique and glaze on it. And I'm just going to tap it here. And the thing I like about this is you get, this gives it an antique look because it has this color. But I don't want everything to be antique to that color. So I put it on first and we're going to clean this off, even though I didn't get much paint on it. And I'm going to come back and I just want to, oh, wow, that's messy. Okay. Now this is set for a little bit. So now I'm going to come back in and I'm going to pull through my other color. So we're pulling through the Venetian plaster and the milk paint through that. And I think that's all I'm going to do. The reason you have this is so that you can keep the paint from your, you don't want to keep spreading your paint across your piece. You want to keep it nice and clean and put the antiquing glaze on it instead. So I'm done with that. So we will move those to the side and we'll let it dry again. And you'll see as it dries, part of it has that darker color part of it has the lighter color um it just so i want to show you you see this texture right here look at this texture look at that isn't that pretty i mean it's just so unique you're not going to find that on any piece of furniture that somebody is selling out there right now so by doing this, now I've got like a mottled color. I've got my water in the way. I'm getting ready to spill it. Let me move it out of the way. There we go. So as it dries, some of this is going to be darker. Some's going to be lighter. The milk paint and the Venetian plaster down in these crevices are going to stay darker. So this is kind of what I'm coming up with. But you see that beautiful texture? I love it. And I literally did that with just my fingers. So the way you finish this out is you're going to use a little of your light wax and your dark wax just to um, add that in. So let's finish drying this. 
So I saw a picture. Well, I've had this frame. I think it was an old frame that someone like um, a hairdresser probably had in their studio. It's a big old frame. I guarantee you it used to have a big mirror in it. And uh, I bought it for like $10. This thing is taller than I am. It's big. So I wanted to have something very unique and different looking to it. Oh my goodness, I'm loving this. So now I want to show you the frame and I'm going to pick this up out of my little pictured thing. There we go. And here is my frame. So see here is the gold part that I went back over. Oh my gosh, I've got people texting me like crazy. So you see that texture? Right there. So I'll show you. I stand about as tall as these flowers and there's the frame up there. So I, it's, it's just beautiful. Now I need to figure out what to do. So I went in here and I redid some of the gold leaf. I redid some, of, so some of this is old, some of it's new and there's a little milk paint on it. So it matched. Here's another corner. So you can see I was a little messy with my milk paint. So, so there you go. That's, that's what we got. And let's see if I can turn this around so you can see me. There we go. So I hope you guys all learned a little something from what I showed you. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. As far as this frame, I'm going to go and I will use light wax. I'll use dark wax. I'll maybe even use a little dust of ages and finish it up. And then I'll have two frames that match. And I'm sure I could put something pretty in those. Now, as far as this big frame here, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I may um, put a mirror in it. Uh, you guys give me ideas. What can you do with a big frame? If you don't want to put a picture or you, know, you could maybe hang wire, put uh, jewelry in it. I don't know. So I am thrilled to be here. Thrilled to see you guys. Thank you for watching. And I'll go back through your comments and see what all we've got. So until then... God bless. Bye.